Hello, welcome back to Movie Husbands. Today we are reviewing Barbie. Barbie and Ken are having the time of their lives in the colorful and seemingly perfect world of Barbie Land. However, when they get a chance to go to the real world, they soon discover the joys and perils of living among humans. Barbie is directed by Greta Gerwig and stars Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling in the titular roles of Barbie and Ken and many, many, many other wonderful actors who we'll get to. So Jeffrey, what'd you think about Barbie? So during the pandemic, I asked my husband if he wanted to start a movie channel as a ploy and a way for us to talk about art house films together. Now I'm talking about Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So I think we have to start there. Um, that sounds like an offense, by the way, or a front. <laughs> well, I know, but you start things a certain way so that you can subvert them. Okay. I think Barbie is legitimately as good as it could have possibly have been. I think you and I, when we heard of that Greta Gerwig was directing Barbie, you can be naturally pretty skeptical of that idea. But you and I said, I really hope that this movie ends up being like the Lego movie. The Lego movie is a movie that you and I cherish from a couple of years ago that takes a corporate brand. It talks about what's so important about that corporate brand and what it means to people while also subverting what we think about it at the same time. Barbie does that in spades. With it's, also Will Ferrell playing a crazy CEO that- Yeah, and also there's actually a lot of similarities because there's the whole relationship between the real world and the toy world. <laughs> and Barbie is very funny. It is a great satire. I don't think I've seen anything quite this incisive and hilarious about gender roles and just undoing these- Preconceived notions about gender identity. Yeah, because what's interesting is even though the film is called Barbie, the film examines Barbie as much as it does Ken. It's examining a male's role in society just as much as a female's, which I found really funny. Most of the shots, I think, at the male side of things are probably the funnier parts of the movie, but the film explores both sides of this, I think, very deftly. I really enjoyed Barbie. I think it was, it was very good. The word that I kept saying to you was clever. It's a very, very clever film. It's extremely clever film and also just very witty in its writing. Noah Baumbach and Greta Gerwig wrote this film together. And all I'm gonna say is I think we need to change the money on the dollar bills in this country to just say in Greta we trust because I had complete faith in this movie from the very beginning. The you sure did. <laughs> the moment I saw this first trailer where they're playing with the dolls and it's the recreation of the scene from 2001 A Space Odyssey, I just knew that this movie was going to be so much more than what I think people would expect it to be or what it even had to be. I think she absolutely just killed it. I am so happy that we have a movie like this that really tears down a lot of these gender roles and also the cultural expectations we put on men and women. You know, this movie does make a lot of fun of those gender roles and stereotypes, but it does so in a way that just shows how stupid and how pointless they are. They're really just meaningless and they look, in the end, really childish. And what's interesting is that's being shown in the metaphorical way by playing with children's toys. Great satire always has this ability to take something very common out of context. And when you see it from a bird's eye view, you say, wow, that's really stupid. For example, there's a great gag with the song Push by Matchbox 20. And it becomes this sort of joke that men always sing to women in their bedrooms with an acoustic guitar. It's so funny because what they do is they take that very common instance that all of us have been a part of in some regard and they take it out of context so that it's so funny. It just seems so ridiculous on its head. The film does that in myriad ways. I could spoil 50 jokes in this movie and there would be 200 more that I, I didn't spoil for you. That's what also makes it such a great, I think, rewatchable movie. This movie moved at such a fast pace. It was continuously throwing these things out you, cultural references, jokes about gender stereotypes and roles. It's you get name dropped Zack Snyder at one point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was so great. The film does a wonderful job of juxtaposing this perfect world that Barbie represents with our very imperfect real world, right? So then there become these jokes that certain things are happening in Barbie land that are utterly ridiculous to think about them putting out this type of Barbie. There's a depressed Barbie at one point. There's this Ken house. Maybe that Ken house is real, actually. I have to look it up. But as those are interacting with the real world, we're put in this position that we're seeing these juxtaposing ridiculous ideas. The idea of having a depressed Barbie, the idea of having an ordinary Barbie seems so inherently ridiculous because Barbie symbolizes perfection that it can only elicit such laughter from the audience. That reminded me of something very particular about this movie. And I think as some of you, if you watched our video reviews before, we do go quite in depth in these movies. And I think from here, we probably will go a little bit more in depth. I would like to. So if you haven't seen the movie, I would recommend seeing it before we continue right now. I agree. Okay because there was a moment you were talking about that and it brought me back to the Ken fight that was happening on the beach. 
And there was a very particular moment that stood out to me where, gosh, I want to get it right, but I might be messing this up slightly. There was an action that I saw that was very childlike. It was like the way somebody would tease somebody or it was they, like, what are they fighting yeah, like this? Yeah. But then there was a moment immediately following that that was more physical. And to me, I saw that as a representation of how they're taught to treat other people sometimes. Most of that comes down to fighting and being physical. And I think the representation of that big Ken war that happened, the two sides of men just fighting each other, was such a great metaphor for how boys are raised and how they might fight in school and get physical. And then all of a sudden grow up and we live in a society that's really predominantly controlled by men. And what do we have? It's just tons of war. With as funny as it was, I also saw it as being a very serious commentary on men in general. Yeah, the film is doing this thing where it's making something quite conscious of something that's part of our unconscious upbringing. Ken literally sees a cowboy on a horse and suddenly becomes obsessed with horses because that's what he thinks manhood is. He walks by a library and he says, I'm gonna go in here and see if there's anything about trucks in here. We've seen our nephews do this, right? We've seen our niece do this. They see some kind of role based off who they are and what their gender is, and they immediately assign to these things. And it's almost like they had so little choice in that role, but the film is doing such a good job of satirizing how quickly those can fall into roles that we didn't necessarily see for ourselves. Which is so hilarious because there will be people who advocate not seeing this movie and criticizing it on a level that points out these things as being woke. And for me, I find that just revealing of your own ignorance. It's because the movie is literally satirizing what it is you're complaining about the movie showing. It's really showing how these gender stereotypes, they're just made up by society. We literally make them up and then we force them on all of ourselves for what? Yeah. These people who have criticisms of this movie for this very stupid reason will take that and grasp onto it so harshly because they can't imagine that their life has been dictated in some way in a societal way. Yeah. It's very disappointing and depressing in a certain way Yeah, that they, yeah. Uh, you know, I hope one day those people will open up their minds <laughs> to understanding that. I've just heard that criticism being passed along about this movie, but it's from a very minority, let's be clear about that, but just that type of ignorance. Yeah, and nobody is immune to it. I mean, I saw things in this film that were being made fun of that I do. Yeah. I, there's, a, there's a great scene revolving around The Godfather that leads into some film bro mansplaining, and I'm like, that is completely me. <laughs> um, there are other people that I know in my life that I love dearly and I said that is that person. So the film is just very astute about these certain details. I guess I shouldn't be surprised because Greta and uh, Noah Baumbach are both extraordinary writers, but I just didn't expect the film to be so incisive and so specific and just so on the nose with its humor. It does such a good job of taking such specific events that all of us have been through in some way and just making them look so ridiculous. I know I said that before, but it's it, it did it so well. Going from there, I do want to talk about the meta qualities of this film because it does reference itself quite a bit in the movie. There is a hilarious Margot Robbie gag in the middle of the movie where Helen Mirren comes back in her narrator voice. She hasn't been around for a while. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about how like Barbie doesn't feel pretty. And it's like, well, they should have thought about casting Marco Robbie in the movie, yeah. which I thought was just hilarious. The whole theater was laughing at that point. It's a great gag about the toy company only having one CEO, one yeah. female CEO. <laughs> I thought they were just jokes within the movie, but the, actually the film is so well researched and it does such a good job of taking these characters and discontinued toys and inserting them into the story in a way that you're supposed to do with satire. So in the way that say Animal Farm by George Orwell, the pig is supposed to represent, you know, capitalism. All of them represent such perfect things in this satirical allegory and it fits so nicely together. It's just so well thought out. Especially like the whole boardroom sequences and making fun, like to me, after the sequences, I was like, how did Mattel let this movie come to fruition? <laughs> like, how did they allow this to end up on screens? Yeah. Because it's such a blistering criticism yeah. of their company. Totally. There was no misadvertising here. <laughs> when they put in that trailer, this is for people who love Barbie and this is for people who hate Barbie. Greta was not lying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. It had so much uh, warmth and joy about the characterization of Barbie and maybe what her original... Uh, purpose was, was to inspire. <laughs> Sorry. I was really trying to hold it. Her original purpose was 
and showing how she was supposed to inspire women to be something more than society was putting expectations on at the time. And as time persisted as a new context, then that message can be undone in a certain way. And it has to evolve and, and elevate itself as a message, what I think the film is showing quite well. Which is also a great metaphor for societal change. Mm -hmm. It's like saying we can, we have the opportunity and we can change this. Mm -hmm. It's not something that has to be set in stone, just like an idea. And that's like the whole point of the movie, which I just found so beautiful. Production design, really, really good. <laughs> No, seriously, and I think no, it is. And again, it's it's very well researched. I, I don't know a ton about Barbie history, but there's all kinds of things about discontinued toys, discontinued houses, her flying from the house into the car because that's how a child would like pick Barbie up. Yeah, and not walk downstairs. Various types of Barbies through the ages that show up. It's very well researched and clearly cares about its source material quite a bit, but inserts it very well into the film. And it's frankly a pleasure to look at. You really believe that you're in a life-size Barbie land. And on top of that, I was reading about this with an interview on Greta Gerwig. The way that she built all these sets designs as being so practical and how she took a lot of inspiration from The Wizard of Oz mm. to create these sets. Completely. All of the background scenes in Barbie land were painted on actual canvas or whatever it was and put behind all the scenes. It just really enhanced the quality of this film in a way that I know we're going to talk about with Oppenheimer did as well. But, oh, these practical effects are just getting to me in a way that I absolutely love. And I wish more people, more people are doing them. I, I can't more like, people are, yeah. it, it's funny because it's... I've been complaining about this for years. And now here we are with a one, this year is just been insane. Mission Impossible, then Oppenheimer, then Barbie. It's just like, there really are a lot of people that are now paying attention to this. I've been hoping for this. Totally. It was just funny to see the trailer for the Blue Beetle leading into this movie. And you're like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> there's that thing. I also want to talk about some of the performances here. Margot Robbie is great, so I don't want to undermine her in any way. I think for me, Ryan Gosling kind of steals the show. I've never seen Ryan Gosling as much of a comedic force. I've never seen him allow himself to be such an idiot as Ken is in this movie. He does it so brilliantly. In order for the satire to work, Ken has to unequivocally believe the stupid things he's saying, and Ryan Gosling completely sells it. Margot Robbie did something that needed to be done in this movie, which is the emotional crux at the end of the film. And she nailed that so hard that I was in tears. The woman next to me was absolutely bawling. Oh, really? We didn't talk about that. It was really sweet because I felt like something was like healed within her. Yeah. She seemed so emotionally impacted in a way that obviously I could not understand being a guy. And frankly, I, I know this has a lot to do with the marketing and you may feel marketing is evil and I kind of feel that way too, but people dressing up for this film, going to see it, expecting a Barbie movie, and this is very much a Barbie movie, so I wanna be clear about that, but I hope getting so much more out of it than they anticipated is really why we should make big budget filmmaking. It's why we should do anything like marketing in the first place, is to give people a reason to show up to the theater and then hopefully push their perspective just a little tiny bit you know, while still entertaining them at the same time. And I, I think Barbie does that in spades. I completely agree. From here, I do want to talk about a few of the other actors. Sure. Michael Sarah had a pretty prominent role in this movie. Extraordinary. As Alan. Extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> he is the ally we need. Alan is so good. <laughs> he is so good. And what's funny is I told you about him right yeah. before the movie yeah. and how he was discontinued and he had a wife that was the first pregnant Barbie that they discontinued as well, who's in the movie as well. It's a great joke too of like, Oh, everyone's named Ken, but he's named Alan. He's like, why are there no other Alans? It's, it's a great joke. The taking of that role and that hilarity of him being on the outside and just have him playing this role of being very supportive and there to help right from the get-go without any questions, just understanding and being apathetic. Yeah. Going from there, I always love to see Issa Rae in freaking anything. Oh, Issa Rae's so good in this movie. She's so good. Her brand of comedy worked so perfectly yeah, in this Yeah, line role. delivery was perfect. <laughs> yeah, absolutely perfect. Kate McKinnon, okay. We can't even get, yeah. yeah. She, her brand of comedy. Yeah, you're right, because her very like weird, outlandish, um, kind of absurdist sense of humor is really brought well into the film. I didn't think about that, but but I think Kate McKinnon as as a person, as a comedian, really informs the weird Barbie that it's a great idea. Greta Gerwig put so much attention to detail in this film, like intention. The actors that she chose that we were just talking about, how they had these specific traits and qualities about their acting capabilities that she utilized in such a perfect way. She understood them as actors and how they would fit in these, in these particular roles in the movie itself. Thinking about the practical sets, 
the writing and the music, the music we haven't got to. Is yeah, really his music is great. I do want to continue on the actors. There was a wonderful trifecta of sex education actors doing over this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I loved to yeah. see. I didn't oh. even know Connor Swindles was in this movie I until he either. showed up. I was like, oh, there's another one. America Ferrer is also in this movie. She plays Gloria, the mother, with her daughter, who Barbie originally mistaken as the person she has to see in the real world, but it's really about Gloria. Yeah. She has a monologue that kind of steals the film. Her monologue, really, yes, it really does steal the film. And I think it's just a message that all men really need to hear. <laughs> like this movie, really, like I recommend it for like the guys got to go see this movie. And I just want to say that the Barbie fans were far more welcoming of our shirts than that. They really were. We the Oppenheimer bros, you guys out there, you need to chill out. All right, Christopher <laughs> Nolan, he's great. We're going to talk about it later, but like chill out with staring at my shirt. Are you ready to go to grades? I am ready to go to grades. I give Barbie an A. I was absolutely enthralled by this movie. I loved it. Why are you looking at me like that? I mean, I'm going to give it a B plus. I, I don't know. Hey, hey, listen, I understand your A. That's fine. I was emotionally impacted by this film. I loved every single minute of it. It did such a fantastic job of building all these big ideas into this movie. It was so ambitious and so creative and so funny. It kept my attention the whole time. Walking into the movie theater, seeing all the people there, going to see Oppenheimer and everything, this is like more of a general point. The fact that these two movies, these big budget movies, really crushed what they were going for and did something that expands people's minds, I hope. I'm just so tired of like all these films just repeating something for the cash grab. It's just not necessary anymore. We gotta frankly, let that go. Each, each one of them on their own level. This movie was funny, witty. It had a lot of stuff to say societally. Oppenheimer has the same things, being very reflective on a societal level in a very much a different way. Both of these movies had so much to offer and so much to think about and so much to ponder. Yeah, I agree. I, I give Barbie a B plus. I think it deserves a screenplay nomination. Of all of its various merits, its writing is just, I, I've used the word incisive a couple times, but it is just so detailed and so funny, so well thought out. I don't really have many negatives to say other than like this just isn't a movie that I would, that it's gonna make my top 10 list at the end of the year. It's just not gonna do that. I think it's great. And I think for the level that it's on, it is pushing things forward. And I really appreciate about that. Making a film about a corporate brand is a shit assignment. And Greta Gerwig did it as well as I could hope anybody would ever do it. So that's, you know, that's what I have to say. All right, and that's it for our review of Barbie. Barbie is now in theaters. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Run there, do not walk run. As always, let us know in the comments what did you guys think of Barbie. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.